Alrighty, so this is going to be a quick little video announcing that the Advanced Scope and Thermals plugin is now up and available on the marketplace. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is kind of giving a brief overview on what is this plugin, what is it for, and why, you know, what problem was it built to solve. And then in the next video, we're going to go ahead and cover everything that you need to know for how to use it. So it's basically going to be like video documentation on top of the current written documentation that covers basically every alt, well, every feature. So. To begin, what is this plugin? What problem was it trying to solve? Well, the problem that it was trying to solve was what I see with performance. So if you're familiar with games like Escape from Tarkov, Insurgency, Sandstorm, and Ground Branch, those are the three that I know of that come to mind, they all use pitcher and pitcher. Well, Insurgency has an option to turn this on and off, but they use pitcher and pitcher slash render target, whatever you want to call them, magnified optics. So the benefit of these is you get a very realistic result. You can do a lot of just really good looking things with them because you can make them easily function like a real optic would. But the main downside is you get a massive performance hit because it's actually rendering the scene twice. So what you can see by these two images, it's rendering my main camera scene. So that's everything you see. And then inside the little scope here, this is its own separate rendered scene. So as you can assume, that leads to a performance hit hence by these numbers. So to give you a rough idea on the performance gains with this versus the default, starting out with no render target active, this scene was at about 260 to 262 FPS stable looking at this direction. Then with the default scene capture, the frame rate hit was down to 180 at a frame time of 5.53 milliseconds. Moving over to my setup, we went from 260 only down to 247 with a frame time of 4.03. So we literally cut the frame time by one and a half milliseconds. Now this difference does, it scales a little bit differently than you may assume. So for example, let's say the default frame rate with no render target was 100 FPS. Then we use the default scene capture component. Your frame rate might only drop down to something like 75 or 80 FPS. Then with mine, you might only drop down to something like 95 through 98 FPS. So here we just went from 260 down to 180, whereas with 100 FPS, we only went from 100 FPS down to something like, you know, 75 or 80, a very, a much smaller hit. So basically the higher your frame rate goes, the more of a drastic difference that is perceived. So don't let the numbers necessarily fool you. This is meant to give you basically overall the smallest possible perform performance hit that I could get out of the default render targets system with, or sorry, the default scene capture component system within Unreal. So this is with a lot of customization. The whole thing is written in C++. However, it is Blueprint exposed and meant to be used with Blueprint. And it's got its own capturing system. So... That's basically the problem that it was built to solve because a lot of plugins that I've seen as well as other people's projects that I've worked on that use these, they really don't do anything towards working with performance. They just get good visual results, but they perform badly. So let's quickly go ahead and dive in to see what all it covers. So here we have the default setup. This is basically what you get, and this is what you'll see in the example demo. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out, and as you can see, we have first focal plane support, so the reticle scales properly with your magnification. We also have second focal plane support, which you will see, oh wait, no, I'm actually using first focal plane for all these, but second focal plane support, so where you zoom in and out, your reticle doesn't scale up or down with it. You can cycle between reticles on the fly. You have thermal support, full control over the material and the colors and all that kind of stuff. Same thing, you can just completely zoom in. You have actual proper windage and elevation adjustments. So what I'm gonna do is I'll aim right here at this corner, pretty close to it, and I'll go ahead and I'll do my adjustments. And one thing I also wanna show you is this is part of the example package. So I'm at zero clicks for both elevation and windage. Let's go ahead and go to somewhere like in here, and then we'll go ahead and move over to the right. So we'll move our point of impact left. Now let's look at the turrets. So the turrets actually function as they should. So we are now at 
In this case, we're doing mill rating adjustments. So we're at 2.8 mils for the elevation and actually we're at 2.8 mils for the windage as well. So you actually have functional turrets. And this is something that you can tweak on top of that. So as you can see here, for a turret adjustment type, we can choose between MOA and MRAD. So MRAD is what we're on right now. That's working on mill radians. If you want to change that over to where, you know, what you would commonly see, I don't know if it's as common really anymore, but you can switch over to minute of angle. It's really up to you, and they actually influence your adjustments accordingly. So to give you a rough idea, we're on MRAD right now. Let's go ahead and aim at the top of this, and I will go to, let's bring this all the way up to four mils right there. So right there, and our elevation changes at 5.1 mils. Let's change this over to MOA, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So remember, we're at 5.1. Let me try to get this as close as I can. So let's move this all the way to 4. Right there. And for MOA, we that took us 7, 1, 2, 3, 7.3. So quite a big difference. So to give you a rough idea, uh, MOA, every single click is a quarter inch at 100 yards. Every click with mill radians is 0.36 of an inch at 100 yards. So one centimeter at 100 meters. Uh, I don't know what that corresponds to the other way around in meters, but you get my, you get the idea. So you have full control over optimization. What happens when the scope cap, you stop capturing with it? Full easy control over magnification, first and second focal plane options. You can easily control the reticles. You can switch between however many reticles you want to assign here, as well as you get full control over the materials. So here's one of the example materials. This is the first one that you saw. You have a fully simulated eye box, which I will show you here in a second. And then for thermals, you have control over the exact same thing here. So you have the same control over the thermal optic as well, but with their own post-process material applied on top of it. So you can control the range, the speed of the shimmers, and as well as all the colors. So this will be the RGB or the rainbow. So this guy. So there's the sky, there's everything that's cold, and there's the hot. So you have full control over that. All right, so let's check out that eye box. So as I move the scope farther away, you can see the eye box starts to close in as we go to the end of it. And same thing, it's a little hard to see, but it moves left and right depending on where it is in the screen. So that's fully simulated as we move around. So here I'm moving around and I'm panning and where everything goes. So you have full control over that. Now on top of that, let's go ahead and check out the material itself. So that has all the eye box options. So here's where you can really kind of tweak it to get the result you want. So here I am. Let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. So here I'm just now seeing the eye box. So we also have simulation with, as you zoom your magnification in, your eye box itself actually shrinks. So here you can see I'm zooming in. My eye box shrunk a little bit, so I need to move my head in a little bit. And now I have full view again. I zoom back out, and I'm still good to go. You can control the eye box diameter. So let's go to like 40. We can just kind of tweak it however we want. And this will make it pretty small all together. And then obviously, you can revert it right back. So I think 60 was the one I liked for this one. And then you have the eye box range, which is the same thing, but forward and back. You have the sharpness of said eye box. So here's the eye box. Bump this up to, we'll do 50, something high. You can see it's very sharp. Set it to something like two. It's very soft. And all that is what you have control over. And you can have the shrink by shadow. So basically how rapid the eye box shrinks. So how sensitive is the eye box? And then from there, we have full reticle control over the colors using masks. So here we have an example here. We have our fully red reticle. For the green channel, which is the two dots, I can change that to be, I guess, back to green, blue, whatever I want. At runtime, I can decrease and increase how bright everything is. So we can go, you know, if you really want it to blur everything out, 
something just absurd. So let's revert that back to 300, and I wanted it to be red for both channels. So just like so, and save. Now let's look at the reticle itself to see how this was achieved. So if we head over to the reticles, this is the one we are modifying. So it goes based upon the actual colors themselves. So in this case, the outer ring is red, the inner two dots are green. You can also add a third option here. So if I were to make this top dot here green and this bottom one here blue, I would be able to tweak the bottom dot separately from the top. So I would be able to change the blue color on top of that. So it goes by masking out the colors and replacing them with what you want. So again, that's how you get full control. That's how you can get kind of the effect of an illuminated reticle and all that fun stuff. And as you just saw, those are things that you can tweak at runtime. So that pretty much wraps up everything here. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord and ask away. And if you're curious about diving into the system and kind of seeing what all you can do to it, what all it requires to work with and all that kind of stuff, watch the second video. And that'll cover basically everything you can ask and everything inside the documentation. It covers that and then some. So I hope you enjoy and I hope I see you in the next video.